When it rains, it pours. Right now, I have two emergencies to take care of on the homestead. Here's a giant cylinder rolling around a car park. Someone's day is about to get ruined. No, it's avoiding the cars. All credit to the cylinder. Shit. <laughs> There's mouse turds, and who knows, maybe I've already got them all. When I built my first cistern, I had never seen anyone build a cistern this way. I just thought, what would be the most frugal way that I could build the cistern? And, and basically, I wanted to do it as cheap as possible, but work <laughs> for a long time. And I had thought of digging down a hole, laying down a vinyl liner. I thought originally I should put a vinyl liner across and then the logs and then I thought, no, the, the rain had soaked through and pushed that liner down. But I wanted it there to keep it separate from the timber. And eventually I settled on throwing down all the logs and then putting vinyl on top. And that proved to not be the best decision ever because the taste of the timber has pushed its way down into the water. So I wasted. I had this thing brim full and I flushed the entire system. And... Well now, <laughs> to fix the problem, I ordered kills. It's a water-based kills. So I'm gonna prime everything really good. I put, I put three coats of primer on there. And then I ordered uh, a pond liner that's drinking water safe enamel. For my next cistern, which is ready to go in any time now, I'm going to line the hole stretch a tarp across the top cover that with logs and then cover that with another tarp and that'll keep everything separate it'll work better and more efficiently immediately but this should work uh just fine i just i just had to drain it once and then go down there and put in a, a you know a cistern paint to cover all that wood So I climbed down in here after I drained it out for the most part and I put three coats of primer and the wood goes all the way to the end which is near the tree. Most of that is juniper log like this all the way across and then there's a few railroad tie pieces and then this entrance is railroad tie. Without the sprayer this would have been really difficult to achieve. <laughs> spraying all of the logs but with the sprayer it's able to get into all the crevices and coat everything pretty well now I just need to clean out the rest of this water that's contaminated with with paint uh, I just need to pull that out we'll get most of this dirt out but dirt doesn't really hurt uh, however I think I can get everything that's loose out of here and then I can go ahead and fill it up again. The problem is today it's going to rain and it's going to rain on and off for the week. So I need to pull this out because I'm not ready for, I don't want to put more water in here and I don't want to waste the water that's coming down from the rain harvesting system. So I need to hurry and move before it rains 
grab that. I'm gonna try to just roll that around by hand real fast to that side and put that hose into that barrel. And although that's only 330 gallons, once it gets going, then I can start a pump and pump water over to the 330 gallon tank that's over by the geothermal. I think that it's almost empty. And so, you know, worst case, if that gets full and the other container's full, then I'll pump some more over to the pond for now. Unfortunately, I just don't have my cisterns ready to go yet. Once the monsoon season hits though, those cisterns should fill overnight uh, once the monsoon comes. And at that point, you know, I've got about 2,000 gallons of these IBC totes around the homestead. And then there's like 11,000 gallons of space in the cisterns. At that point, I may, not, may never have to run to haul water again. And I'll still expand the system. I, I would like to, in the future, get a couple mules. So I need to plan a system just to maintain them. Something I plan to do differently in both cisterns and in my root cellar is to cut a larger hole. I'm just going to build a box, like a foot square, and put a cap on it and allow way more ventilation. And with that much ventilation, it should prevent, it pre prevent humidity. And that way, water won't condense against the top and then get fall back down into the water. Uh, with water never touching that painted wood, it should just really guarantee that I don't have any contamination. And with the really great ventilation, I can prevent that. And moving this over was pretty easy. I, I just got to hop up and throw another screw in this side of the drain that way I don't miss any of the water that's coming down when it rains the other emergency is that since I lost my cat mice have been starting to come into my geothermal here look at all the starts but there's littler ones that they started to eat and man there's just lots and lots of little starts Here's a piece of a snap pea that got chomped in half. In the past, I've had them come in and pretty much wipe out all my starts before. So this is what I did immediately to remedy the situation. Oh, and by the way, they were chomping down on other seeds. These are all... Uh... I grabbed some of my corn flour that you can find on my website. It's yellow sweet corn that I grind down by hand i use it for baking all the time but this trick you can mix half of my corn flour and half of some baking soda and the mice will eat this their stomach will expand and they'll die and you can see i probably shouldn't have stirred it so much but the little black spots are mouse turds they've been coming in here and i think because this is here and so easy to get they're just filling their stomachs and going back home and leaving everything else alone. They're so good at getting around that I had those seeds up here and they were chomping on them clear up here. Which means they were probably coming through that little hole and then jumping onto the thing and getting in here. And you can see in this one, I didn't stir it. It's, there's mouse turds and who knows, maybe I've already got them all and, you know, we'll see, but... Uh, I'll leave these here for a while. And... Well, that kind of solves my emergency for now, hopefully. But I still need to hurry and get some more cats for the homestead. This row has a lot of snap peas and beets coming up. And that's mostly what I planted. A lot of snap peas and beets. This entire row should just be brim full of them. And there's some other things sprinkled in there, here and there. I can see some lettuces and alfalfa. Here are the five plum tree cuttings that Deacon sent in. And they seem to be happy. I had them in a cup of water for maybe five days or so, and I didn't see any roots developing. And I saw somebody just plant them directly and, and claim that it works well. And so that's what I did. And it looks like I'm getting some growth on the ends here. So hopefully these will kind of take root a bit and I'll watch for that and then I'll carefully separate them and by that time I think I can plant these outdoors I tell me what you think in the comments below but I think 
that these plum trees should be fine throughout the winter. It's it's not super, super bad, you know. I've been diligently keeping these moist or damp <laughs> and uh, nothing. I haven't noticed any sprouts in these yet. And it's probably because it was just too cold. And hopefully some will still come up. But it's been like two weeks. Most of these seeds that are popping up now were down here about a month. So it was just probably a little too cold for them to sprout at first. Uh, pump for the aquaponics system should be here really soon so i'll get the aquaponics going again gosh i guess i'll just wait till then to test the levels and see if somehow it started to cycle but i it feels like you would want the system running for that cycle to really work well, i don't know we'll see what are you doing bud come down here a handful of times now and each time I'm able to hurry and catch a few crickets before they hide and I keep throwing them in here I haven't cracked this lid to hurry and catch them and see how many's inside I'm more focused on getting the ones here so they're hiding by the time I just opened it but there's got to be about 15 or 20 crickets in there now which just might be enough to get me started growing crickets but I'll keep hopping down in here and throw in whatever crickets I can find into the breeder. I'm also going to haul in all of these potatoes from fall crop. These were all the small ones, but I'm hoping that if I put these into the van where it's warmer, I might get a bunch of eyes on them and I'll be able to use these for potato seeds out there in my new, well, I have those new six rows out there. My own potato seeds that I grew on the homestead last year. I think it's called chedding. So the smaller potatoes will get eyes like this eventually. It works best if you keep it in a, a warmer space. And I've had these ones in the van for a while waiting on them. And if you imagine, I can cut this up pretty much almost every eye you see. I can make a cutting of it. So I can turn this into a lot. If you think at least one, two, three, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, maybe twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, probably sixteen, seventeen, maybe eighteen different chunks here. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and go plant these now because my rows are deep. They're basically compost and I don't see it getting colder than like 35 degrees in the near future. With a week of rain in the forecast, it might be an ideal time to plant them. I know that these potatoes don't need the water quite as much because they have the potato with water in it already to help get them started, but maybe they'll, maybe it'll speed up their growth process just like the rest of the seeds to, to really have a good heavy week of rain or water in the soil. Mm -hmm. 